Welcome back, everybody, and today's another great day. You know why today's a great day? Because today is the day you're going to learn Badge by Cream, just how they play it like the record. Today I'm going to cover the rhythm guitar parts that are going on through that great Leslie tone that happens um, during the solo, and of course we're going to cover the solo and the little outro parts. This song is incredible and a great example of why Eric Clapton is well, where he is on the, on the Mount Rushmore of rock guitar players. Hey, if you haven't done so already, I really appreciate it. Jump down right now, click subscribe, and ring the bell. I'll let you know every single time I drop new content, which I do every week. Every one of my videos has jump links in it, so you can click and move uh, the cursor right to the part of the lesson that you want to see, if you want to bypass some of my yapping. And any support you could offer the channel is greatly appreciated. There's super thanks right below down there. And there's also my Patreon page. Encourage you to visit that too. On my Patreon, there's exclusive content and includes chord charts and tabs of all the songs that I do uh, lessons on on the YouTube channel here. Okay, so Badge, what a great song. So this was part of Cream's Goodbye album. And... Um, each one of the members of Cream were putting together songs for that record, and this was one of Eric's. And Eric actually co-wrote this with George Harrison, and technically Ringo Starr offered a, a line, a lyric line too. But uh, Eric and George were sitting down writing out the lyrics in the song, and and um, and uh, George had written down the word bridge for the for the song. I guess for that you know middle part where it goes into the guitar solo there. And uh, Eric was looking at the page upside down from his view, and he started laughing, and he was pointing at it and said, what, what, what is badge? What the hell is badge? And they had a little laugh about that, and apparently they left the name of the song badge, but that's what it was. It was him misreading bridge off of the lyric sheet. Another part of the story goes that Ringo Starr sort of came in, stumbled in while they were, you know, writing the song, and Ringo had, had plenty of his... Um, medicine shall we say drinky drink and um they were stuck on some lyrics and um you know ringo threw in the line of you know telling you about the swans that they live in the park because he just walked from the park and came in or you know around george's property where the swans were but um but that's where that line came from anyway great tune let's get to it okay so the first first thing we're going to cover is the rhythm guitar that's happening um, throughout the tune. As far as I can tell, Eric is using his 335 um, on this song. Um, he's got a 64 335. I have a 67 335, which will have to suffice. So he, this song was ultimately recorded in October of 68. You know, Cream did their farewell concert. I think it was recorded in November of 68 you know, where he was famously playing this guitar. So this was definitely in his arsenal at this point, and he was playing it a lot. Um, I debated whether it was not, whether it was this guitar or his um, single pickup Firebird, because sometimes when I listen to that solo, it just sounds like it's, it might be that. But, but um, according to Keith Williams at 5 Watt World, thank you, Keith, um, Apparently it was his 335 they broke out on this and used on this song, so I'm going to go with that. Um, okay, so the rhythm guitar part. So for tone, um, he's got, you know, Eric and most of these tunes with Cream, you know, he was running pretty overdriven amplifiers. Um, I'm assuming largely Marshalls he was doing that live. I was assuming that's happening mostly in the studio too. So he's got them cranked up, but he's backed off on his volume a little bit to, you know, just to bring it down a little bit. And um, the other thing for the rhythm guitar part is actually a touch of tremolo going on here, um, sort of the rounded sine wave, um, not sort of maximum depth or anything, but something like that. something to that effect. So the song opens where he's in that sort of tone. Um, I've got it rolled back till about eight um, with a healthy amount of overdrive on there, but I've got it backed off. So you can hear the very intro is. So it's back and forth between an A minor 
and a D on that intro. And that sort of pattern is largely what's driving throughout the song when on this particular rhythm guitar that's happening, right? So it's and then E minor. Now the piano is doing that. It's hard to tell if the guitar is also. The guitar just may be doing. Either way, it sounds great, right? So it's again A minor. Build. C. A minor. D. And then an A minor plus nine. So, with that open A, that's how I like to play it. So, climbing into the next verse, he mirrors the bass and does that, and the same thing. Second verse is exactly the same, A minor to D, E minor. C, A minor, D, A minor 9. So right before the guitar lead, there's just this great little noodling section that he does that was overdubbed, um, where he's noodling over the last part of the verse where it goes to the from the C to the A minor, D, and then to A minor 9. And then it goes into that Leslie section, but on that last one right before there, he does this great little part, and it's based off of sort of like you know the maybe familiar with the like the Hendrix chords, right? So when you have a, a, a bar chord that's sort of shaped off of the A string, like here, you can play. You sort of slide up, um, and you start it on the major third of the chord, right? So which is an E note for a C. Great little trick to move from that position to that position. Um, but he plays around with that um, shape um, around the C chord and the D chord. And of course, when you're in that position, you're right there with an A minor too, which all of those chords are happening, right? Um, so it goes something like this. Great little noodling part. Um, I don't have it 100%, but that's close. I'll, I'll play that slowly. Such an awesome little part. Now we switch to that Leslie guitar is the next part. We're going to cover that. Um, in just a minute, I'm going to finish off sort of with the, uh, uh, the rhythm guitar part. So now during the lead, um, after that Leslie part's going on, and when I say the Leslie part, I trust you understand I'm talking about that one. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But interesting, very faint on the record. It's really hard to see. Uh, see, it's really hard to hear. But um, there's recordings out there that actually have some of the sections, some of the solos and the vocals pulled out and you can actually hear some of the instruments better. And one of the things that you can hear a lot better is this uh, rhythm um, guitar of what's happening behind the guitar solo. So on that, what happens is the tremolo comes off on that part. So I'm going to turn that off. And um, uh, while the Leslie is part is going on, um, uh, the rhythm guitar comes in like this. So same sort of tone where it's overdriven, but he doesn't have the volume maxed, right? But the chords that are happening are C at this position, G, which is the D-shaped G, and you bar all the way over to the sixth string so you get that B note. G. And then up to D. Right? You're like, I don't hear that on the song, but that's totally there. Click on this link and you'll be able to hear it after my lesson. So it goes like this. So 
that's what it's doing all the way through that solo. I never knew that was there, but um, totally makes sense, and it creates a great foundation underneath the whole thing. Um, and um, yeah, so for rhythm guitar, that's pretty much it. Then it goes back to the, you know, it does a last verse after the guitar solo, tremolo comes back on, um, and it just runs through the normal verse progression. Let's talk about that great Leslie part now, the bridge that I think informed Badge and see how that was done. Okay, so the bridge section, let's talk about that a bit. So the bridge was played by George Harrison and on the album credits, um, I think it was called, it was, it, he wasn't able to be named by name just for contractual reasons in the music business of what they could allow to have happen because he was on another label, I guess. Um, but it had some name like Mysterioso, something like that, but it's, it's George. Um, and he's playing, I believe, his Strat, his Rocky Strat, the one that's all psychedelic painted. Um, and uh, again, so the, this record came out in October 68, so it was probably, or, or it came out, uh, or it was recorded in October 68. Did a little research, because I actually thought George was playing his Rosewood Telecaster, but he hasn't, hadn't been presented with that yet. Apparently, that didn't come to him until after the White Album was released, just after the White Album was released. And when was the uh, White Album released? November 22nd of 68. So, I'm going with the Strat, um, but it's clearly a Fender. Um, what he's playing on this, and he's got uh, running through a Leslie effect, or probably a Fender Vibratone, one of the two. Um, and um, his part is fantastic. It's probably what you think about when you think about this song. It's this part. Um, so remember the rhythm chords that Eric was playing in the background, the power ones, the chords themselves were a C, G, G, D. So he's playing a version of that, but um, different sort of arpeggiating. So here's the part. Right? So it's first little part is a D off of a D chord. And then C. C major 7, really, because you're leaving that B string open, which is part of a G. And it runs that way all the way through the solo. And then you never hear it again, but that's, that's the part that's happening there. So it's based off of a C. G, D, but it's basically played like a C major 7. And the Leslie really makes the part, right? I'm using the uh, uh, ventilator 2, um, which is my favorite um, that I've come across so far. go all right so let's get to it let's get to the guitar lead so this is gosh such a great example of Eric Clapton at his absolute sort of 60s peak um, in my opinion of just ripping overdrive guitar solo and it's melodic he has so many I mean just any anything on Disraeli gears you know the first or second cream record I guess I don't, know, I don't know if I can call this the best, but this is one that is certainly one of my favorites of all time. And there's a couple things he does throughout this whole solo um, that keeps your interest. He's bouncing between, and the whole thing is in D pentatonic, and he basically just moves between minor pentatonic and major pentatonic. There's sort of no deviation from that at all. Um, and... Um, he does it so effortlessly, and uh, so let's let's talk about. We're going to break it into parts, and um, we'll go through each part here together. So, the other thing he does is there's a lot of pre bends 
So if you're not familiar with what a pre-bend is, you know, you know what a bend is. You know, right? Well, a pre-bend is that you've, you've, you're bending the string up before you pick it, right? So instead of bending up, you're starting up, right, and doing that. So you're sort of starting up and coming down. So there's a bunch of that going on. Um, this is a great example of that happening in a solo. Something by the Beatles, another great example. George does that all over the place um, in that solo. But, but yeah, so this is in D, more overdrive, definitely bridge pickup, turn it up all the way, just max everything up. Um, but you still want to retain good definition with the note. It's not just fat metal distortion. Um, it's amp distortion is what he's doing. Um, and through pedals, I'm trying to replicate. But um, let's talk about the first part. So the first part, like I said, starts with a uh, pre-bend, um, and it's on uh, the D minor pentatonic, okay? So here's the first sort of section. This is all minor. straight up that was straight up minor pentatonic the next part um, he moves to major right he outlines a D major right there right there's another pre-bend now we're gonna bend all the way up here but take it back to your major, right? Your major third, right? So you're bending up to this G note. That's what you're doing, right? Because that's your D. So great. All right, the next part, he's moving back to minor pentatonic, but there's a sort of a hint. Maybe he touches one major note in there, but it goes like this. So, a couple pre-bends again, right there. The part where he almost, he almost hits major, he almost hits, he almost bends all the way up there on that second pre-bend, but not quite. It's sort of like right in between, but it definitely, if you really listen, it's, it's almost there. It gives the impression that you're actually touching it. That one, the bigger one. Doesn't quite go, but close. All right, enough about that. Next part, back to firmly minor pentatonic again here, and he's gonna end this phrase fully in major, which is great. So we ended that last phrase sliding up to that D note, uh, 15th fret. So it puts us in position now to play in this D box. That one up there, right? So um, we're sliding up, uh, we were up 15, and now we're gonna start on 13, right here. Great, man, <laughs> just love how he just flows effortlessly from minor to major again, right? So one more time slowly. Catch those slides in and out, right? All right, so we ended that last phrase in major, so we're staying with that. Um, we're gonna start off in major and again move to minor at the end of the phrase. Right, so we, here's the major part. Now we're switching to minor. That little flourish there. Then we move to our last part. 
right? So that's outlining that D seventh shape here. Back to our basic minor pentatonic box. And to close it out, right? So the drums are taking us out. It's gonna end on an A minor, minor chord. So he brings us back to that A minor note. So the whole thing's in D, you know, minor to major pentatonic, right? And that last little bit takes you and lands you on A minor. Okay, then the last little parts are on the outro. Um, there's a couple outro leads. All right, now on the outro, there's a couple great little licks that he does here. Um, uh, he's doing these over an a, uh, E minor chord. So these are great E minor pentatonic licks, all right? The first one goes like this. Great little lick. And the second one, again, making use of pre-bends, and we're just sort of pre-bending and going down in pitch over an E minor pentatonic scale. All right, so that last little lick, so he's sliding into it. Um, and remember, this is over a part where the rhythm guitars are going from a D and ending on that A minor nine. So he slides into that lick, first making, uh, outlining a D major triad. So he's sliding up on the G string to 11. Whoop. And then giving that double stop on 10 on the E and the B string, and he's just gonna come up here to 12, do the same thing, and then back to 10, right? So that's the first part. And then to get that A minor nine, all you're playing is nine on the G string and 12 on the B string. So bass is playing its part, the rhythm guitar is playing its part but the light lead is just playing those two strings. So that last little lick. Now, if you want to go pro, you could add on a couple notes. Um, so that last little bit, you can add on um, the 10th uh, fret on the D string, which is a C note, and play the open A string. So if you don't have a rhythm guitar playing with you, you could close it out very strongly by doing. Because that gets you an A minor nine, um, all that. But, uh, but if you do have rhythm guitar, don't step on them. Play that little part. All right, well, that was Badge by Cream. I hope you learned something new today. Um, and if you haven't done so already, please jump down right now, click subscribe, ring the bell, let you know when I drop new content, which I do every single week. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this video, and if there's another song you'd like me to take on and do a similar lesson uh, to this. All right, well, until next week, take care, everybody. Mm -hmm.